Yeah, so I'm in I'm in school for computer science. Uh, I I don't like it. Like I I was doing okay. Like I wasn't um, it wasn't like I, I sucked at it. I was pretty I was decent at it, except this one course that I had to take, which was called discrete mathematics. And this course discrete was discrete uh, mathematics. Yeah, discrete mathematics. And this course like, was literally yo, a yo. com. Shh, shh. Two plus two equals four. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that discreet, man. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to episode number 18 of The Johnny Rogers Show. My guest today is my good friend, Shreth, and he also um, you filmed my music video as well, my first ever music video. You were, like, the, a huge uh, part in, uh, in that. So, man, like, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> of course, of course. Our word today is time. You want to pick that, but like you were saying, you're like, I don't know. And it was the same thing with David. I was asking him the <laughs> last guest. I was like, he came up with it, adaptability. But then later in the podcast, when I tried to get him to talk about it again, he was like, man, I, I let's talk about like how much of a pain it was to just come up with that one word. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were like, uh, I don't no, know like, what uh, we're going to talk about. Yeah. Like when you, when you said, just think of a word, like, yeah, like I, I just knew like because i've been uh dealing with this for some time now i just thought like okay this is perfect i'll just say time yeah yeah hey time is a good one man because you can talk about time in pff, a bajillion different ways 100%. what what about time are you kind of like consumed with right now losing it getting more of it like losing it mainly like i i think i have a problem of like saying yes to too many things and I, um, I just say yes. And then after a while, I realize, okay, I actually don't have the time or the strength to take this project on with everything that's going on already in my life. So um, like right now, like I'm working nine to five, Monday to Friday. And then some days after work, I have a shoot and Saturdays mm -hmm. and Sundays I'm working anyway. So I have like no weekends. So if I say yes to a shoot, I, I get excited in the moment. And then I realize later that I just can't afford to do it. Yeah. You realize the extra, like, it's not just go there, do the thing. Like you're going to be editing that footage and like working with them through that. And then, yeah, yeah. it's all the extra it's, stuff that comes with it. I get that. It's a, it's a lot. And like, I I'm trying to like work on my own projects, like, uh, my own videos, my own music, or my own photography, but it's right now it's just clients, clients work and dealing with clients. So it's just helping other people succeed in their dreams. But I'm literally, I have literally no time to work on my goals and my dreams. So yeah, one man. of the things I want to do this year is start saying no, <laughs> basically start saying no to projects. And I did one yesterday, which was kind of nice, but I just thought about that. Like I, I said no in the moment, but I just realized that I did the first no this year, which is great. It's super <laughs> freeing when you can finally just say no to a project and you don't have to say yes to everything. You're just like, 100%. Oh man, you need that time to yourself to just like turn off, you know? Um, not yeah. even, not even just like work on your own stuff, but just like relax. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I have it that much time to relax with everything that's going on which is fine but at the same time it sucks uh, it's to you. fine it's <laughs> fine for now and then one day you'll just fucking snap dude you're just like <laughs> yeah i mean at the same like uh, like I, I speaking to friends and like a lot of um colleagues and stuff like a lot of people are losing work left right and center so like just uh being that is able a good point. To be, yeah so being <laughs> busy in that sense yeah. is kind of rewarding and like you feel uh like you're lucky in a sense you know so i do definitely feel lucky i get that i get that but like at the in the same sense you saying no to an opportunity that's presented to you 
is still a good thing because it, it will then give that job to someone else. That job just doesn't disappear. They will still need someone for that job. Right. Oh, yeah, that's true. Too. So it's yeah. like, if you're overwhelmed with work, that's just like the universe telling you like, Hey, you're really good at your craft right now. And everyone wants to hire you, you know? And so, yeah, you just need to say no to more things. And the more things that you say no to, the higher value the opportunities become because you your time is more valuable you know what i mean like if yeah, you yeah. if you say yes to everybody then that means like you you're just giving away your time um at, at any chance you get you're just like here you take yeah. a piece and you take a piece and you take a piece and then the only time you get to yourself is when you're sleeping which is not really your own time yeah no that's true yeah. Uh, and yeah, like that, I, I agree with what you just said, like, um, like time is value. And like, uh, if you start saying no, like, like uh, there's this amazing uh, YouTube channel. I don't know if you know the future. Uh, this guy, Chris Doe, like he's, he's an amazing teacher and like, he's, he's basically a graphic designer, but like he shares a lot of knowledge and things like that um, about his, um, life like uh, his background and like now he's got a successful company called the future and they do a lot of like educational um um courses f-u-t-u-r yeah yeah that's the one okay i'm just gonna share a screen for people who are watching on youtube because shout out to people on youtube they deserve the benefits <laughs> here's what you're yeah, yeah. talking about right now yeah this guy chris Dill. so like uh if like all of his videos are amazing. So like he teaches uh, basically uh, creatives on how to um, how to charge clients and like how to like actually have conversations with clients too. And he's got a lot of video examples where he's talking to um, clients and they're trying to um, book him for the really less price, but he finds ways to show them that he's actually m- much more valuable than just uh like he's not he's not um i I don't know how to explain it like um the way he says it is like if you're a doctor you don't treat every patient the same way right every Mm -hmm. patient requires attention and you deal with each patient separately but just the same way you should uh deal with clients so when you approach a client like they might be like i want this video that i saw on instagram i want you to create something exactly like this but then he says no, let me learn more about your business. And I want to know where you see yourself in five years. And according to that, based on that, I'll create, uh, I'll create something that will benefit you because me copying someone else's work might not be the solution that you're looking for, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true. Yeah. Cause there's a great, um, there's a great like uh, Sun Real line where he says, uh, "Following the leader will only get you as far as the last leader." And I was like, "That's mm-hmm. that's so true." And that happens all the time. Is where people see someone um, well successful or that they deem is successful, and they think that by copying exactly what they're doing that they're going to achieve the the same results and it's not always the case and then the problem with that is they put it on like someone like you or like photographer or videographer to do the thing to do the copy and you as an artist deep down are like i don't want to fucking just copy so yeah, like no creative work. everyone's There's nothing copy, to yeah. this yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh man that's got to be frustrating i totally get that yeah, but you you first started out in like music because you said you went to school for music, right? Yeah. Um, yeah what yeah. made like kind of, you want to kind of talk about that? Like, what made you want to get into into music and then actually go to school for it? Yeah, so I I started playing guitar when I was in eighth grade, um, and yeah, just uh, I honestly started because I thought that was the only way to get girls. <laughs> <laughs> or, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's not true anymore uh, it's not no, true. No, rock it's and roll is in, yeah rock yeah, and yeah. Dead. rock and roll's dead <laughs> now you got the name now you have lil in front of your name yeah exactly lil lil shresh <laughs> little, little little. <laughs> <laughs> but name. yes so i started in school um in eighth grade uh trying to like just start playing guitar and then i uh, I, I was in a music school while uh, studying uh, like normal school. And so I was studying in a music school back in India too. 
and I just fell in love with guitar. Like my goal at that time was to go to Berklee College of Music, which is really hard to get into. So did like sheet music, like I was uh, playing like uh, mainly focused on blues and jazz. That was my thing. But when I first started, I was playing a lot of heavy metal, gent nice. music. So yeah, like uh, when I moved to Canada, uh, just, uh, I, I didn't initially go to a music school. I went to uh, Simon Fraser University and I was studying computer science for a year. Mm. And I only did that because my parents forced me into it because I'm Indian. So like they, <laughs> every, like we're, we're all out of going to be it's in the contract. engineers. It's in the contract. <laughs> yeah. You can't do anything else. Like music or uh... film isn't the first thing that comes to mind no. for like any parents like can you, you imagine to... <laughs> can you imagine if it was re- if it was reversed <laughs> somehow and there was a kid out there that wanted to go be a computer science engineer and they're like no the order is you will become a director a poet or a musician <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure like uh in like bollywood like that's yeah. how it happens because like uh maybe you, yeah yeah because like a, a bollywood is all nepotism like you can't just get into bollywood like you'd have to be it's gotta be side, science, uh, family uh, like. yeah family yeah so like there's not many like that's why like a lot of movies in Bollywood like just suck because like and they reuse um, the same people over and over and over they reuse the same yeah. people there's it's just not like many early Hollywood, ideas though. yeah yeah that no, makes sense it, it'll evolve like people will come along and be like this is bullshit and then they'll be trying to change it or create their own independent way too it just uh um, like might yeah. take some time I don't think it's moved as fast as Hollywood has moved yeah I mean, yeah, like the, there's a lot of like independent stuff for sure. That's really good. Uh, there's this uh, show on Netflix called Sacred Games, which I don't think is Bollywood, but it's it's like if you if you've seen Narcos, it's like yeah, yeah. Indian version of Narcos based on oh, true stories. Shit. And it's beautifully shot. Like I think it's one of my favorite movies or tv shows that have come out of india because there's no cheesy dance scenes there's no (laughs) cheesy dialogues or anything like that it's just beautiful cinematography beautiful script beautiful story writing amazing actors amazing acting super good so Mm -hmm. you should definitely check out sacred games sacred games yeah we'll have to definitely check it out but what happened so you're in school for computer science and then what yeah, so I'm in I'm in school for computer science. Uh, I I don't like it. Like I I was doing okay. Like I wasn't um, it wasn't like I, I sucked at it. I was pretty. I was decent at it, except this one course that I had to take, which was called discrete mathematics. And this course discrete was discrete uh, mathematics. Yeah, discrete mathematics. And this course like, was literally yo, yo. a com. Shh, shh. Two plus two equals four. <laughs> Okay. keep that discreet man don't fucking tell anybody that you narc yo this <laughs> discreet this mathematics is, sounds so ridiculous <laughs> it is yeah because it's it's a uh it's a, a combination of probabilities calculus and coding wow that's wild so i failed that course twice because like i and just why do they call it i'll scream mathematics <laughs> yeah it's it, it was it's the hardest class i've ever done like like even when the teacher was talking, like uh, I had no idea what he was talking about. Like it, it oh, was that's insane. the worst, isn't it? When you are just yeah. trying to pay attention, it's just like wah, 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 wah. And you're like oh, yeah, no. <laughs> and and the worst, the the worst part was like my other classmates were all um, Asians. Like there was no white person in my class or any other race. Like it was just like just uh. Asian people, so like uh, Indians, uh, Pakistanis, or Chinese people, and all and these coding people. since they were five, you know what I mean? Exactly, like, yeah. So they had a background in this. So they were really good at this course. Damn. But for some reason, I just couldn't get it, right? So um, that was one thing I told my parents, like, hey, like, this is really hard. Like, I, I was doing okay earlier, but like now, just like completely lost. Like, I don't know how I'm going to uh, pass this course or like, get to the next level and um they're like just keep doing it whatever uh my mom always knew that i it's always good advice just music. keep doing it you're like i'm gonna <laughs> fail like whatever just keep going yeah, you're like just, i can't just keep going. Kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going <laughs> going <laughs> yeah but yeah like uh so around that time my dad uh got cancer 
Mm-hmm. So he was really ill. And um, that's when I, I couldn't speak to him directly because uh, he was just resting most of the time. So I just spoke to my mom and I said, hey, like, uh, I want to study music. I can't continue doing this. Like, I want to study something that I'm passionate about, like, that I'm good at. So she's like, okay, like, try, like, uh, look for, like, music colleges or something uh, in, in Vancouver that you can apply to. So I went to uh, Art Institute of Vancouver. Now it's called LaSalle College of Vancouver, but like back back in the day it was called Art Institute. So I went there and I applied and then they did like a test just to see where I stand. And they offered me a scholarship. Hell yeah. So so I, I called my mom again. I was like, hey, like I'm getting a, sp- a scholarship from this school. Uh, it's a great school. Like the studios are amazing. The instructors seem amazing. So like, I think I want to go with it. So I went with it and I, I left uh, Simon Fraser. I graduated, I finished my first year, by the way, in Simon Fraser. So I got, I got that certificate. I finished that course too. Mm. I didn't get a good grade. I just got the passing grade. And then I switched to this college and Oh, yeah, like right. though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like just the first year, like I finished the still, first year, and you didn't like dip yeah. out before the end of it. Yeah, still something yeah, to yeah. say about that. Yeah, so I just like I, I just want I didn't want to just switch completely. I just wanted to like get done with it. So I finished that and went to this college, and yeah, it was like the best two years of my life because I got to um be around like other people like me like who were interested in the same things as me uh and a lot of them were more um talented than i was at at the time so it was nice to be around people who i looked up to and uh yeah yeah. it was amazing yeah it was super cool yeah there's like something like so great about um making that decision you know and like the the outcome is always like so worth it so worth it like i remember just wanting to be a stand-up comedian and just wanting to get to toronto so bad because i knew that like i was like oh i just need to find like other artists who are just like as psychotic about this art as i am and then i'll feel mm-hmm. like oh, i'm home a little bit which is exactly what happened as soon as i got to the city and i started finding other stand-up comedians and like going to different shows and the people that i've had on this podcast as well not just stand-up comedians but like people like yourself people like jared um i was just like it's like yeah this this like sense of community is such a such a better it's like reassurance that you made the right decision you know no 100 yeah. percent. yeah what was did uh, you have sorry go ahead sorry <laughs> i was gonna say like did you have a uh, similar problems uh like with your parents or like uh, was it like uh, a little bit easier for you to <sighs> it's not like i knew it was going to be easy it was just more so like mm, how do you have that conversation because it's it's not i knew that it's like telling them you want to be i want to be a stand-up comedian it's i'm like i know that they're not going to understand like what that means like what that looks like because in their head like the traditional route is like college or university whatever get the degree get the diploma then get the job in that field and then just stay in that job for you know 40 years however long right before you retire but in my mind even like even before knowing that i wanted to be a stand-up comedian that was like the very idea of picking one thing and then doing that one thing for the rest of my life i was like "Mm -mm, that sounds awful like I didn't, yeah. I did not subscribe to that idea whatsoever from the jump of being told that I had to even pick a job, you know, when no, was no, that's true. Case. but I remember, I remember like, um, uh, telling my parents I was going to get the diploma and then finish. Cause it, I, I didn't really discover stand up until after my first year, not that I didn't just. Dis- I've loved stand-up since I was like 11, but I mean, like I didn't try to be a stand-up comedian until my first year of college was done. And then at that point, it was not like I could just quit college and then just jump right into being a stand-up. But yeah. I finished Sorry to cut off. You off. What, what did you take in college? What were you studying? Uh, policing. So I, the, I, the only reason why I took like police foundations was because my aunts and then like other people in my family have worked for different like policing agencies so i was just like you know what that seems like a logical option right like if you have people that work in that field that it seems like an Mm -hmm. easy thing to transition into 
But I was just like, man, I couldn't. When I really thought about it, when yeah, I yeah. thought about me at doing that job, I was like, mm-mm. Not for me. <laughs> Not for me. I knew. I knew immediately. Even then, I was like, I could put in all this time and all this effort, and I know I'm going to be like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, for sure. I was like, fuck. You knew just from, like, seeing the math class, you're like, hmm. Like, imagine if you went through, how many how many years is computer science? It's a four-year program. Four-year program. Okay. So it was good yeah. that you at least dipped out after the first year and didn't do like two or three years and then, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, that's true. That's I mean, like- uh, I knew from the get-go though, like, because uh, I, I wouldn't have chosen to do that. Like I said, I, was, I wanted to go to Berkeley College of Music. So it was never in my life goals list that I was going to study computer science. It was mm. never there, you know? It was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was my, parents that wanted me to do it i mean uh i mean they had good reasons like if you're in computer science like you i would be making a lot more money right now sure right but i probably would not like where i am (laughs) just the day-to-day work it would be like man that's the kind of stuff that creates alcoholics you know because like if you are just so unamused and just unthrilled and un I don't know what's the word unsatisfied with what you're doing every single day you're just gonna fill your evenings with debauchery not that there's anything wrong with that but you know your day should also (laughs) be fulfilling (laughs) yeah no that's true yeah laugh. i I mean i have friends i have friends who love coding though so like it is some yeah uh, like it is some people's passion for sure yeah because it it is problem solving yeah it is problem solving and even in our industry like we do a lot of problem solving like especially when i'm on shoots and stuff right um you plan everything uh like from start to finish but like when you go to the shoot there's something that is going to go wrong so like part of your job as a professional uh in the industry is like yeah you can like tackle that and like just solve it without anyone noticing or like uh it doesn't take time like everything just goes smooth so like you can tackle anything that goes wrong in yeah. any given situation right that was like when we were filming the video and it just started like was it raining or like exactly yeah <laughs> so we had to like improvise and then we decided to go to the uh, parking lot but that was yeah, never it, part of the idea it was better like, yeah, yeah 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 and it was part of most like majority of the video is in the parking lot instead of the yeah. outside scenes even though i only planned for the outside scenes right yeah so yeah, like in the moment, if you can figure out a way to improvise, like uh, it could, sometimes you just could pay off. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Man, that's like just going back to the word time as well. I'm always trying to find a way back to it. The <laughs> pr- over preparing and like, uh, especially especially if you are in the field of like what you're doing, like if you're a photographer or a videographer, or, you know, it doesn't matter what you're doing, but over preparing for like the next day of work and making sure that you have all of these like plan b c and d all lined up will save you a bunch of time yeah yeah yeah. because like just i I guess time and and improvising is good to kind of mix together too because i was gonna say like us like just switching at that last second and not like worrying about staying out and filming in that one place and then going to the other place did save us time because it was like the majority of the video like you said was shot there so yeah i don't know i'm just ranting now. <laughs> no 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 it, it makes sense like it's it's always good to plan but there's always some things that wouldn't happen the way you planned it but yeah uh, if you don't sh- uh, show up to a shoot for example like plan uh, like with the plan like you, you're not sure what you're trying to do and when you get home you're like oh I, I could have done this I could have done that I totally missed this shot I totally missed that right so planning is good too but at the same time there are times when things just happen naturally and like improvising or like listening to other people in the room like just reading the room it seems like oh this works this might work this might not work so yeah, that's that's a big factor too. So I think like both both of those are equally important. I think mm. one of the yeah. worst things though, I remember like 
um, being on a movie set. It was just like a student film, but like there were so many, something would ha- go wrong and then there would be like eight people trying to fix one issue. You know, oh, like yeah. all giving their their take on, on what would work best instead of just like two people figuring it out and then everybody else doing something else. <laughs> I saw that happen so many times, so many times. But that's just like, I feel like, I don't know. The film industry is like that anyways. There's just too many too many cooks in the kitchen. And there's always just like so many people around and like there's a lot of people just standing there doing nothing and then anytime I did background acting I was always like there are so many people here that you're like what is your job? Yeah. <laughs> no, that is so true. Like I I noticed that I've never worked on a film set so I don't know how it is on a film set but I see that when I go to India, right? So like when I'm at the Indian Air, Delhi, New Delhi airport, I see all these staff members, but they're just standing there. I'm like, I have no idea what you do. Like, why Why does it take three of you to stand there? Like, what? I don't know. I don't get what you're doing. They're you NPCs, know? bro. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there's uh, like, yeah, in film, like I, th- I guess like the amount of money they raise for each film, they just have money to blow. Yeah. They're just like hiring Maybe. people just, I guess, to show that yeah. they have an expense so that they get more money. That's the crazy thing about like budgets or like getting a mm-hmm. budget is they'll just tell the person, oh, it costs this much. So it could cost $500,000 a year to run this operation. And then it's like, if they don't spend the $500,000 a year, then they'll get less next year next you know, year exactly they realize, yeah. yeah right so they just hire people for no reason so that they can get the more money like i don't know what the deal is <laughs> maybe like i uh, speaking of like that like uh, i i did the course uh, business boot camp by christo from the future right and even in that course like he was talking about like how, when he charges clients for shoots and or like for projects right um for example if it's a video shoot he would charge for a workstation. He would charge for all of his subscriptions, even though he's editing and he's shooting, he would charge for a photographer, a videographer, and also charge for editing. He would charge, uh, like if it, for example, if it, uh, if you're editing, color grading, everything. So like all these tasks that you're doing, like he puts a price tag for each, each one of those. So, so, so that when the client looks at it, it's like, oh, there's that many people working on this project but it's not if you're doing all of these all of this work but yeah, you're yeah just charging like the, the industry standard price for all of those tasks which is insane but yeah, that's how yeah. it works in film that's i guess that's the way to put it i mean that's the best way to put it is like literally list each of the things that you're doing as almost yeah like they're separate jobs because they are or someone else is doing it like, yeah, yeah yeah jobs held by separate people because it's like yeah they should be almost yeah god that's so, so smart it is yeah it's just, i i i know of this but i'm just i just don't think i'm in the place like him where i can justify charging the way he does because no but there's like i i love like a, a, taking in all of that information though you know because the best mm-hmm. thing that you can do is like even if you're in a position right now where you can't act on any of the knowledge that you're getting, it's knowledge is still knowledge. The second that you are able to act on it, you now have the power to, you now have the exact layout Mm -hmm. and plan of what to do, which is, it makes things even faster and like saves you so much more time. And it's like a good way to use your time as well. Right. Like you're like, if I can't be making big moves because I'm not getting like these like high paying clients right now, well, let me at least like, gain more knowledge to increase my price or to you know whatever it may be but like yeah i think think that's smart and i think that's like something that a lot of people like need to hear as well because so many people hear it's it's the same thing as like seeing the seeing the success model and then trying to recreate it people will like watch one youtube video or they'll read one book and then they'll think that the knowledge is going to immediately happen and be in their life and it's like it doesn't work that way it's like it'll be there it'll be there you now have it and now it'll be it's there in case the opportunity happens it's like that's that's true that makes that makes sense speaking of like uh, youtube tips and stuff though i hate videos where people are like here's five tips 
to do this or like here's 10 tips that will get you this many followers or like like yeah, those yeah, kinds of videos where it's, it's, it's like a number value like on something there's only five tips that you need to hear like these I, I are think, the ones yeah, yeah these are the ones these are the only ones that you need. like i absolutely uh, like those kinds of videos yeah yeah those videos bug me shit out of me too because you yeah. it, it's it's Whenever you're like Googling something like that too, you'll see the thumbnails and it's like all in a row like that. Here's five things, 56 things, like seven things. <laughs> yeah. Like how do these, these people um, have that many? Uh, I'm trying tips. to think you're not all the profit. <laughs> yeah. And then you like look at their socials and like even they're not there, like, but they have tips. Like they're teaching me something that they're not good at. <laughs> That's the <laughs> worst. Sounds- right that's the worst there's a there's a phenomenon like that too that a lot of people like to make fun of um in comedy is like the the comedy teacher is the person who's like paying for classes and like there there are great like comedy classes where you can like learn a lot of things but there's a lot of people who are like nobody comedians that are just running these like workshops to to get you to be a successful comedian and they're just taking money from amateur people it's you know what i mean like it's really you're just like that's really (laughs) shady business that you're doing there but like yeah that that was always the thing the joke is like uh, if you run a comedy class you should have to play like your hour special or something to your students first and then they can decide whether or not they want to join the class that's so fair yeah that they should definitely do that at least happen right yeah we should should have to watch your material first before i decide whether or not you can teach me some comedy because i don't think you can you can teach you can teach like business side of comedy for sure that's Mm -hmm. an easy that's an easy thing that you can teach right like how to monetize how to like um, brand yourself and create an image and like push that out and you know how to contact a theater how to get an agent like these are all things that you can't teach but how to be funny somebody has to just find that somebody has to just yeah. like, discover that through like trial and error of writing and saying a joke on stage and it not going well and then listening to it back and then rewriting that joke and then getting back on stage and trying it again yeah. and again and again and again but like uh, there's no class where it's like here's how you write a premise and then here's how you write the punchline <laughs> yeah i mean punchline. but you could like learn how to you could learn how to do proper good storytelling to like keep in- the audience <laughs> engaged yeah right? i would say writers like a writer's room is better than like if to to yeah, yeah. Like, here's my story like help me cut the fat basically like you just need like friends essentially those people just need friends that they can just like tell their story to. And they're like, cut all yeah, of that yeah. out. That's too much. So we don't need any of that information. Yeah. Yeah. That's always the best. Who's Those your... friends that tell you a story that just goes nowhere. It just keeps going again. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your favorite comedian right now? Or like, who do you, who are you listening to or watching? Ooh, right now? Oh, right now. I just started watching um, Jimmy Carr. It, uh, his like Netflix special. He's just. So Is that the it, British guy? Yeah, yeah, he's British. He's like oh, yeah, very okay. dry, like cut, dark kind of humor. Yeah, um, I think I, I think dark, I know whatever. That it's not that he's dark. got a very weird laugh, right? He's yeah, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's pretty funny. He's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, he's got. He he's reminds me of a, a funnier version of Sam Simon Cow. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. he's very judgmental too, but at the same time, like he keeps it like very comedic instead of like harsh and rude, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like if Simon Cal took care of himself. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah. Or laughed a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> laughed a bit more, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Simon Cal's like that motherfucker. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> chilling yeah. somewhere. Oh my god. You, you say he's got a new special on netflix or yeah he's got a new uh comedy special on netflix i don't know the name of it is let me pull it up here not that it, like he needs the promotion <laughs> yeah he's <laughs> on netflix <laughs> he uh, made it I, yeah yeah he's fine uh i just want to get the name of it i think it's called his dark material mm. yeah jimmy carr his dark material all right, for anyone watching out. that wants to watch that i've been watching it so far and it's pretty pretty damn good i also saw that louis ck put out a new special i'm curious about that one i watched his last one i saw it live i saw his last hour live and then i saw and they watched the recorded version as well which was really fucking funny really good 
Mm -hmm. um but (laughs) the craziest thing was he he bought like an advertisement for his special right before like saturday night live so it just like caused such an uproar with all of these people who were like how dare he like come back and try to make a living (laughs) yeah yeah i think i think i uh it was a while ago right that special or yeah yeah it was i think it was like maybe a couple weeks ago two weeks ago okay okay yeah so i i don't know about this one but i remember the last one that he did that was just on his website or something right yeah or, yeah, yeah they're all just yeah. on his website now he can't post them anywhere hbl oh, yeah, okay. never hbl never work with him again so he's still like technically canceled yeah like no major network is gonna work with him they haven't been they've he's just done it all through his website so it's like all right. yeah Man, this cancel culture do. is really fucked yeah, it's i mean it's it, it is and it isn't right like he he did something bad and then people held him accountable maybe you could argue that like the end result was like a little too extreme but like he does still have like a giant fan base i think it's like unfair yeah. for the people who like don't have who are just like regular people that could cancel <laughs> you know what i mean like somebody who's just they don't have fans that they could just ask for money or like not ask for money i mean he put out an hour of comedy special it's a lot of work but like um yeah, a yeah. Prod, i didn't you know joe at the fucking hardware store doesn't have an hour special he can sell on his website when he gets canceled for you know calling someone by the wrong pronoun or whatever like he just gets fired from true, the hard yeah. he just gets fired from the hardware store and now he's got to go work at you know tim's or something i don't know yeah but like for for joe i feel like it's a lot easier to switch lives like you could just like move to another part of the city you could and then nobody knows who you are like yeah, no, yeah, nobody yeah. knows who you are. yeah, yeah. but, if you're, but if i mean you're, if it goes viral on twitter people might know who you are you might have to move to a new country that's uh, that's if true, it goes yeah. viral online then it's more than just like your little town right like he yeah. he could be in another but you could go to a like, small town guy yeah, you could go to like a small town, of like no, yeah, yeah, yeah. where no, where they're only on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, or you could work on a cruise ship because cruise ships are like hey. mostly for like older people, right? Like, yeah, I don't any... <laughs> you should open up. You should open up a uh, like a, a canceled relocation business. Have you <laughs> yeah. been canceled? Like, I yeah. Have you been canceled? Let me. Like, these are your options. Yeah. yeah, I'll give you some options based on your circumstance. Yeah, how many it's tweets? Like a, <laughs> a lot of thousand. indians do this like they have like immigration officer yeah. offices around canada but yeah. mine would be do you want to uh revamp your life or like just like like have a start over like did I'll, you have a high idea give me a new yeah. identity i love you like do some digging into like all of the people that are like hating them you're like oh, we'll look into and see where all the safe spots are because we'll look at and see where all the dangerous ones are it's like damn yeah. this dude in uruguay said you should die <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't go to uruguay i guess yeah yeah <laughs> so I'll, I'll probably like i'll probably like do an entire experience for them so like starting from plastic surgery mm, to um uh like professional yeah, high quality photos fake passports like uh like getting my photoshop skills and everything involved right and then do like a uh, testimonial like videos like the whole experience like it'll only cost you five hundred thousand to completely change your life and, but then and no we can one charge knows- a social media package where we just create fake social media platforms so it looks like you've been a, a real person for like 30 years exactly yeah <laughs> Yo, this Just might fill it with fake be, photos. Yeah. And and my production company, like, it's called A Vision of Tomorrow, too. So, hey. <laughs> like, literally, like, brand statement right there. Like, this is what <laughs> we provide. <laughs> like, all these services. Uh, cancel. <laughs> Don't think of, like, about Toys present. R Us, cancel, call us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cancel, yeah, cancel, call us. us. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Uh, 1 800 cancel. Uh, so like call Saul. <laughs> better call Saul. Yeah. Or something like that. Like uh, like use that strategy as um yeah to advertise. That's That'd be funny. pretty sick. <laughs> I love this model idea already. Nobody steal this. This is ours. We're helping cancel people relocate. Yeah. No, I got I got all the social media handles and like yeah. uh domain locked in. So <laughs> the domain's locked in. Everything's locked uh, in. Cancelcallus.com. Like, 
<laughs> I'm just going to buy like, it right these now. Two, these two dudes on the internet are helping cancel the people. <laughs> find new lives yeah yeah but we'll, we'll choose we, and then we have that. to enter our own program because we get canceled <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i mean i'm not obviously not gonna uh help like a serial killer or someone like no, that right no, no, no. but like just some like uh, like uncle joe or just, like someone like yeah, that yeah, like, yeah. like regular people what, 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 what do regular people get canceled for you know like the the karen we're gonna help the karen who like lost her mind at the Victoria's yeah. secret you know or like one day you were angry and you just lashed out on like a subway employee and it's yeah, like whatever. it was just a bad day it was an yeah. accident yeah yeah all i'm doing is just being like hey like that was bad yeah uh, that lady shouldn't have you don't have a lot of money twitter. <laughs> yeah i know you don't have a lot of money but i'm just charging you a premium five hundred thousand uh, dollars pro bono <laughs> no pro bono no pro bono okay, okay. no, no pro bono. I'll, I'll, like i'll seize all the assets and unless you're able to pay, like, seize like... your assets you go from no all pro bono down to seize your assets <laughs> yeah and i then, gotta make money somehow. and then when they don't want to pay you just like hold the stuff they've been canceled for over their head They're like what <laughs> yeah and like because like now i have access to all the social media i can it's like true. literally destroy their life even it's more an insurance plan exactly yeah this is like how business. far can i take this <laughs> i don't know it's a great bit though <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> all right <laughs> bring that to a close God, what are you working on uh, lately because i know last time uh, i spoke to you you were doing like restaurant promo videos and like cool cool shit like that hanging with people but now o- omicron scary omicron um transformer virus yeah. is here and now we have to hide again i mean uh luckily like i still have that job as well so like i'd still do content for them because but now because because of omicron like because now there won't be people going to restaurants anymore we're gonna do more creative style videos which i'm happy for because i hate shooting people uh in clubs or nightclubs like although like that's what i've been doing for the last four or five months but i absolutely hate it it's <laughs> the like, same it's um, the same crap every night it's the same uh s- style of content every single time but now I'm actually kind of satisfied one because i'm working from home two because there's uh like all, all of my clients are trying to do more creative shoots because they know they can't shoot people anymore so yeah. um so they're like, oh, now we actually get to be creative, which is great because like I have the entire restaurant to me, right? And I can use the entire restaurant to shoot wherever. But before, all the tables were both uh, mm. had people sitting on it, or like, uh, so you'd like have to kind of just like issues. awkwardly shoot them at their table. Yeah. yeah so now I have uh, now I can shoot like um, more like creative stuff, uh, which is nice. Like I can shoot food in any part of the restaurant doesn't matter it's not like just one corner with like one light on at the yeah, top and yeah, just shooting yeah. it that way like i can shoot wherever i want which is great so yeah i'm still happy that i have that um gig but other than that like i'm doing i started a cooking show with a friend of mine it's called um oh yeah Ita you de- get a camera Ita de Kimas. yeah so i got this camera yo wait, let me bring the camera on yeah bring the camera oh, out yeah. Ita Diki Mass, it was called. Ita Diki, uh, Ita Diki Mass. Ita Diki Mass. Is it is it out? Like, is there like a somewhere that people can go follow or subscribe, or is it still just a concept idea? Yeah, I'll you send you. I'll send you the. I'll send you the links and stuff. Okay. So right, this so is the. Put that in the description below for people listening. Yes. Yeah, okay. So this this is camera here. Ooh shit. Yeah. yeah just. Yeah, that looks expensive. Yeah, it's uh, it shoots six K video, man. 6k part of me yeah i don't even know and that like, existed i just like, discovered yeah, like that a, right now for the lens it's, it's so small literally... like it's so compact that's crazy yeah but i mean like compared six... to my sony you think 6k you think the one that's like on their shoulder <laughs> i mean that giant like red camera. i mean like this is uh like uh like even those red cameras right yeah like if you just look at the body it is same size as this but just a uh, little bit longer but like when you put the lens 
uh, the lens now, like the battery, the battery goes behind. So when, when I rig it out, which I'm going to eventually, it will look as big as those cameras, but Damn. it's already so ex heavy that I can just use the top handle or like the side handle and have the lens on top and full focus. So it's like heavy enough so I can just shoot like this, but yeah, like I have my SSD right here. So I can just plug this in and I'm ready to shoot. Like this is a terabyte and I shoot wow. almost half a terabyte every shoot. Cause like it's records so much data and like the file sizes are so massive. Yeah, that I Half fill up. A terabyte every shoot? Every shoot, yeah. Like Damn. for the cooking show, for the cooking show, we have two That's of the same crazy. cameras. For the cooking show, we have the two of the same cameras. So like every episode is almost around 800 to 900 gigs right now. So storage killer for sure. Like I can't. Not even storage way. killer. Like talk about time, time killer. What's the transfer time on something like 800, 900 gigabytes? I mean, the beautiful, the beautiful thing is that because it's uh, going on an SSD, I can just leave it on the SSD while I edit it. Mm. Um, true, and then, true. and then I can just transfer it to a different drive for backup uh, or just yeah, archiving. Yeah. Right. But uh, yeah, it's not like an SSD. Uh, so it works fine. Yeah. It's great. You don't yeah. really have to transfer it off of the card. Yeah. That's right. You're just pulling it right into the program. Damn. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty sick, right? Life hack. But life <laughs> hack, yeah. Listening. It's uh <laughs> it's a beautiful camera. Like I still have my Sony though. Like we shot on my Sony, right? Like I yeah, I still have that one. I use that for all the restaurant and all that uh kind of shoots. But like the cooking show, or if like there's a uh for music radio or just like personal stuff, I'm just doing everything on the new one because yeah, this year, like, I want to, but by the end of this year, like, I want uh, to have my website finalized and done. And, like, I want to sell services directly from my website. But one thing that I want to do is, like, have a completely new demo reel. So, like, no uh, footage from 2021 and before. Everything that I shoot this year would be part of the demo reel that's why uh, i was going to talk about time like that's a time so important because mm -hmm. like, i want to do a lot of different projects and um use footage from that those projects to promote my demo reel and like also put all those projects on my website because uh the footage from this camera doesn't look anything like other cameras it looks yeah. like it came straight out of a movie Wow, that's wild. <laughs> so, like, I, I want to, like, redo everything that I've done so far, like, or... I have to get another music video out of you before your rate goes up. You got to come back to Toronto, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I'm not coming down there. <laughs> You're not coming down there. No, no, no. Yeah. I'll take the train you, or yeah, something. If just, yeah, if you just come for, like, a weekend or something, you can stay at my place and, we could, like, just do, like, a radio. Plan it out. Like, yeah, plan. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As long as you have a plan for a music video, that'd be sick. Yeah. Yo, I, I found this website I'll send it to you. It's like uh, all these like abandoned locations around Toronto or like Ontario in general. So, and there's a lot of like uh, abandoned mansions and stuff too. Like with, I saw oh, one which had like a, yeah, like they had like a literally like a grand piano and like just rusted keys. It looks Damn. insane. Super Dude, dusty. So. If I can get a car, like at some point this year, maybe I could even drive up. Because, mm -hmm. uh, because then that would be make it easier to like pop around these kind of different places to film too, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be the, that would be the move. I would think go up super early in the morning or something, and then film a bunch of spots, like crash somewhere, and then come back the next day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just have to find the right song. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still I mean, working. I have on a lot there. of beats. I have a few beats that I can send to you too. Oh yeah, yeah, dude, always send me beats. I love, I love to hear it. <laughs> yeah, Gotta yeah, that's another too. thing I want to get more more in, beats too, eh? To this year, like I, uh, I don't think I, re I haven't released anything last year. I have a release coming up this year, in like next month or the month after, which I'm pretty excited about, um, but. Those are old songs too. Like I, I've had a lot of my current releases are songs that I wrote like two years ago or like a mm -hmm. year ago. 
it's nothing that I've written right now because like all the stuff that I've written recently, I haven't had the time to finish them. Uh, <laughs> so like, I've got yeah, you. and like I the old songs you, that are getting this one here. Old, uh, no. So uh, if you go through my website, you can see because like a lot of them are private. So I've got music, music here. And uh, like uh, the first tab. Compositions. Compositions. Yeah. So uh, yeah, just go down a bit. Yeah. So uh, the song that is coming out, like in this, uh, it's in this playlist up here. So if you scroll down a touch. So yeah, the one one of the songs that's coming out is Berlin, and the other one's apart. So like the that one apart. Oh, Berlin right here. Yeah, and apart over here. So apart. these two songs are, yeah. So these are like more like tech house techno. Nice. And so yeah, th these are coming out on a Vancouver label, Beat Ooh. Solo. And I have another song that's if... that will come out re pretty much when I finish it. <laughs> but <laughs> the label's like literally been waiting on my remix for six months now. <laughs> yeah, which is insane. And like, of time. I, yeah because of time like i uh just don't have the time to uh finish it because i like after work i don't feel creative enough to finish a song and weekends i'm doing other shoots so it's really hard for me to find the creative day to actually finish a project yeah right? music and like that yeah you, like like with photography or video like yeah you can find time or like you can find the creativity like if you just go do it right yeah but with music like some days are insanely good and then there are months that are just extremely dry which you're is just like i can't think of i'm hitting a wall right now yeah yeah like you could have a groove like everything sounds good but you're just not feeling it even though it sounds good right so that's where i'm at right now i uh, just that's why I need like a little bit more time. I just want to dedicate like three or four days nonstop just to music, mm. you know? Yeah, I find immersing yourself more so in it like definitely helps. I always, um, like even when I started doing more podcasts, I found myself listening to more podcasts as well. So it kind of gets me inspired to want to do more. And then when mm -hmm. I was creating music, I was listening to more music. So that uh, kind of like the two um feed each other like that so if you're like oh i want to focus on creating more you know like how techno house songs for the next like four days and then just like blare that on your spotify for a few days and yeah be all geared up and inspired to, to make your own shit because that's the best thing is like listening to um someone else within your craft and then being saying to yourself like i can do this better <laughs> <laughs> yeah know, you know and then and then you immediately want to get yeah. to work you get inspired to like get to work you're like i gotta get down and then like prove that i can do it better you know like it's one thing to say it it's another thing to just actually do the work yeah and like i i come from like more uh like i've written music for short films and things like that so like i know like film music too so i like one thing that i think i have a problem with when it comes to music at least is like uh i'm perfectionist so like mm -hmm. i that's why i don't release anything so like if you like look at my website i have like tons of songs there but like i haven't ever released them because i always feel like i can make them better mm -hmm. than they already are and i want to incorporate strings or uh just like uh, like an orchestral section or just make mm -hmm. it more like cinematic in a sense dude just put but, it out yeah i think that's the way to do it this year put this uh, this year yeah this year i'm just gonna just put stuff out and i think like, you know, change like I, if you have spotify or not spotify soundcloud pro you can actually yeah. update the file yeah yeah no that's so, true I've, I've done that in the past yeah yeah yeah. if you happen to you know want to add strings to to one beat and then just update it but yeah. like definitely get it out because the more people listen to it the more it inspires you to make more yeah i think my biggest problem is like i um fear uh like people like I, I don't know the word for it like or i can't think of it right now like 
when you put something out there and like people have opinions about it or like they like judge what you're doing you can't right? think about any of that dude yeah you can't, you can't and that's why i haven't done that's why i don't put out a lot of my art like I, i'll put it on my website but i won't share it with the world because like i'm always like oh what if they don't like it or what if what, if, what like, if what if you know but like you'll never know that it'll it'll always be a what if and then the other thing is like what if you like what if something happens to you and you, you there's no more you to make this art you know what i mean and then all the art that you've created is just on what on private on some site that no one will ever yeah. get to listen to you know like that's that to me is more like ah oh, like god imagine like what what could have happened, could have happened. If, if you released yeah. all of it and then like even one person heard it and then that made them want to do something or it helped them through whatever you know like that to me is what's yeah. worth it not the like the thought of what if someone says something shitty about it? So it's the internet, dude. Someone is always gonna have something shitty to say about it. No, that's a definite. That is true. That's not even a what if anymore. That's a definite. Someone will say something crazy and like try to bring you down for sure. You just have to be just strong enough in your shit to ignore it, basically. No, that's true. That's the goal this year. Like I'm literally putting out everything this year. Maybe not the old stuff because it's too old. Like I don't care about it anymore. Yeah, but look I just at it with fresh like... eyes though. Even yeah, I do that 100%. with old bits. Like I've looked at old jokes where I was like, "This bit is done," and then I've looked at it like years later, been like, "Oh, I know how to finish it now." Because <laughs> yeah, you see yeah. it with new, you see it with like new <laughs> yeah. eyes, or you have like new tools or something. Yeah, new perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better new knowledge too. Yeah, yeah. you might like else. look at like an old beat. And you might like pull up an old beat, and you're like. Oh, I just needed to like increase the BPM, and now it's not yeah, good. maybe you know yeah, I mean? like, something, something, simple, something simple. Like that. simple. <laughs> you're just like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. What it was. Because sometimes when you're working on something, you get so wrapped up in playing it back and forth, back and forth, and like going over the same constantly loop. listening to the same thing. Yeah, you're listening to the same loop over and over and over again. You're like, how can I change this and make it like just a little bit better? And then you like you. It, it becomes like nothing like it, it doesn't like you were saying earlier like it brings you no joy like it's just it's the same thing it sounds good but it's, you're not feeling it like you're like yeah yeah 100 percent. yo can i just take a quick pee break dude let's wrap up we're coming around to an hour anyways yeah okay <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 let's just wrap well this is perfect time right. um, okay, sounds good everyone go follow um do you still use this instagram account a vision of tomorrow yeah yeah and yeah. then yeah my music page is uh shreesh top music so yeah. yeah music and then go check out the um soundcloud go to the website as well stressing.myportfolio.com um and i'll link to youtube as well and i got a youtube right here we'll give people all uh maybe maybe don't include that youtube because i i uh, have a new one in new youtube uh, okay, yeah i have a new one send me the links you'll send me the links yeah i'll send you the links <laughs> Uh -huh. yeah <laughs> all right you go to the bathroom and i'm gonna like close this thing out and then we'll, we'll chat more all uh, right brother i'll hit record <laughs> i'll stop right. hitting record <laughs> thank you so okay. much i'm gonna do my outro i'm not gonna make you sit through my outro while you need to go to the bathroom so, so i'm like you can all right take off <laughs> all right uh, that was stressing everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Um, if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, don't forget to leave a five-star review um, or a comment down below. That always helps. And share the episode with your friends. Uh, but until next time, everybody, stay classy or at least try. You've been listening to The Johnny Rogers Show. New episodes air every Tuesday and Thursday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.